Greetings, church family, and thank you for joining us on this online service, uh, Sunday, April 19th, 2020. Thank you for being with us. We want to especially welcome those of you who are joining us for the very first time. Perhaps this is your very first Sunday uh, where you're connecting with us online, and we want to welcome you especially. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for being with us, and we trust that as we spend time together, uh, your life will be enriched and those who are watching with you, that their lives will also be enriched and strengthened in our faith, in our walk with our Lord Jesus Christ. We want to encourage you at this time just to take a moment, uh, if you can, to share uh, and invite at least two other friends uh, who uh, may benefit by joining us on this service. So if you uh, can do that, to share the YouTube link with them or if you're watching on Facebook share that with them uh, or uh, you know you could just tell them join us we are, I'm watching this live service and uh, you can invite them uh, to be a part of this service so if you could take a moment to do that we'd really appreciate it this want to remind us of a few things you know as uh, uh, here in Bangalore uh, the lockdown is continuing and uh, uh, many parts of the world uh, likewise and uh, especially for those of uh, you who uh, may be single uh, and uh, you're alone in your apartment, uh, you can't you know, meet um, many other people or hardly any people, anyone else. Uh, we want to encourage you, especially those of you who are in Bangalore, our life groups, many of our life groups uh, are continuing, of course, in a virtual way. Uh, they uh, connect online and interact and pray together and uh, you know spend time in the word together so you could go to our church website <clears throat> apcwo.org slash life groups and uh, you'll have a listing of various life groups uh, and uh, remember now uh, there are no geographical restrictions so it doesn't matter which part of the city you are in fact uh, which part of India you are, uh, you can always connect virtually to any one of these life groups that are meeting. Just reach out to the life group leader, the names of the life group leaders are given there. Uh, reach out to them, ask them, you know, how their life group is meeting virtually uh, and uh, they will uh, send you the information so you can connect from wherever you are uh, at the given day and time uh, and just, you know, at least have opportunity to interact with others, keep your faith strong, keep yourself encouraged and uh, also, you know, as a church, we want to be uh, sensitive to people who are in need. Uh, so uh, we have our member care uh, 800 number. We also have our member care uh, email ID. So if you want, if you are in need in any way, you're part of it, uh, the local congregations here in Bangalore uh, and, um, and you're in need, please reach out to email or you call that number. Somebody will be there to respond and help. Uh, we'll do our best uh, to uh, be of assistance to you as we all journey uh, through this um, uh, time and until we are able to come out of this and uh, norm normalcy is restored to all our activities in our daily lives. So if you are in need, uh, please reach out. Uh, don't hesitate. Uh, we want to take care of those who are of the household of God. And of course, uh, also beyond that, whatever we can do, we will try to do. Uh, now, uh, we, uh, we also uh, encourage you, uh, if there are special prayer requests, you can email that prayer request to prayer at apcw.org and there will be people who pray for you, pray for that need. So if there are uh, prayer requests and things that you are going through um, uh, that you want uh, to be supported through prayer, uh, you can reach out, uh, email us and somebody will get back to you from the church office, uh, wherever they are remotely. Of course, everybody is working remotely, so uh, they will get back to you and uh, we will try to back you up in prayer. So uh, we are here to support you. We're here to help you uh, during this time. So please reach out. Let us know uh, if there's any help that's needed. Now, uh, we are going to uh, spend time together in God's Word. We're going to uh, really, uh, you know, pray and minister. I want to uh, encourage your heart that, uh, you know, to have expectation. You know, even though we are connecting online, we are not all together in the same place. Uh, God is omnipresent. Uh, he is uh, He's above all of these things. Uh, so right where you are, uh, I want you to expect 
that the Lord Jesus will minister to you today through this service, uh, that his power, by the power of his Holy Spirit, he will touch you, he will minister to you right where you are. For those of you who need healing in your bodies or uh, you're going through situations that you need Jesus to intervene, uh, expect, have expectation that as we uh, hear the word of God, uh, it's not just to stimulate us intellectually, not just to accumulate knowledge. That's not the purpose why we read the Bible. God is real and we want to encounter him through his word. We want to encounter him through the ministry of his Holy Spirit. But we must have expectation that today God is going to meet me. Today God is going to touch my life. Today God is going to answer my prayers. Today God is going to intervene in my situation. Today God is going to come through for me. Have that expectation as you sit on the other side of the screen or wherever you're watching or however you're listening. Have that expectation and God will come through and respond to that. He'll respond to your faith. We're going to make our declaration before we go forward. This is what we normally do when we gather together in our congregations across the city. Uh, we uh, take a few minutes just to all rise up to our feet, hold our Bibles high up in the air, and uh, make our declaration. Of course, uh, if you want to be seated and do that, just be comfortable. It doesn't matter. Uh, if you want to stand and make the declaration, you're welcome to do that. So, Let's, wherever we are, let's hold our Bibles high up in the air. And I want you to, uh, let's say this out together, making our declaration. This is our proclaiming our faith in God's word and in who he has, uh, who he is and what he has done for us. So let's say this out loud, bold and strong together. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I am saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of his blessing. To many people, I receive his word, I believe his word, and I live by his word. Christ is my master, and to him I am in absolute surrender. I present myself as a new wineskin to receive new wine and fresh oil being poured out on me. God releases new things and a new work of His Spirit in me and through me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us in that declaration today. And, uh, you know, just to say these things is so encouraging to our hearts because we are saying uh, we are coming in agreement with the word of God. And that's confession. Confession simply means to come in agreement with God. God's word is truth. And I'm saying yes to his word. And I'm uh, agreeing with his word. And that's what we are doing as we make our declaration. Now, what we do from time to time is uh, uh, we try to share testimonies. Uh, uh, that, that have come into us, you know, uh, that people are ministered to, people are blessed uh, as they, you know, they receive the word of God in various ways. Um, and uh, some people do write and tell us. Now, there are people who have uh, immediately posted uh, some testimonies on the live chat after services. Uh, and, and we are grateful for that. We thank you for it. We encourage you to do that so that people who are watching can see right then and there that uh, there are those who are being touched. We, we, we are excited about that. Uh, we also receive testimonies through email and, and, and we like to uh, share those testimonies because we have a record of them. Sometimes people send uh, even their medical reports along as attachments. And so, you know, it, it's, um, it's something that is valid and we can talk about it. We have proof that somebody has sent us this information. And so I want to just go through some of these testimonies. I will go in a, in, in a chronological order, uh, starting from uh, uh, March 29th, uh, and I'll just cover a few of these testimonies. Now, of course, I cannot read all the testimonies, and also I may not be able to read all the details, and of course, we won't be able to show you all the medical reports that may have come in with those testimonies, but we'll give you a gist of what has come in so that uh, we can celebrate uh, God together. This one came in by email on the 29th of March, 
And uh, this person, uh, so 20, on the 22nd of March, uh, we had a supernatural Sunday, just one touch. And so here are some testimonies as a result of that. This person writes and says, uh, uh, in faith, I had asked for healing for my back. Uh, uh, this person had problems with the back, neck, and shoulder uh, that I've been experiencing since the beginning of this year, since the beginning of 2020. So last week, that was the 22nd of March, uh, I believed when we were praying, and I had instant relief. And, and God also gave me wisdom uh, to do the right kind of exercises and keep all of this away uh, without even consulting a doctor. I want to thank God and glorify God. Uh, here's another testimony that came on the same day. This was on Sunday, March 29th. This person writes, I hurt my hand yesterday when I fell. It was extremely painful. I couldn't lift anything or do anything with my hand. Uh, the doctor said to come for an x-ray as he thought it was an injury. This morning, that was Sunday morning, 29th of March, uh, while praying, I just thanked God for my healing uh, and thanked Him for Psalm 103 verse 3 and Isaiah 53 5. And while watching the service online this morning, even before prayer was made, I felt the click in my hand, uh, the pain had reduced. I can live things, I can move it again. Uh, and, uh, and, and so this person uh, uh, just writes uh, to thank God for that. Uh, this testimony came in on Saturday, the 4th of April. Um, and they write about the Supernatural Sunday. Uh, this person said, God will be talking to me about uh, faith and deeds going hand in hand and telling me to speak and put my faith into a hatch action. Uh, this person had uh, hypothyroidism for, for two years. And uh, she had spoken to her husband saying she was going to stop taking our medications. That was from the 19th of March. Uh, and uh, she said, you know, without me medications, it was very difficult for her even to get out of bed. Uh, she would feel depressed, wouldn't be able to concentrate. So it was a big step for her to think about doing this. And uh, But that Supernatural Sunday, which was March 22nd, uh, uh, she uh, stepped out in faith and, uh, and uh, she just believed God for it. And then of course she couldn't check her thyroid levels because of the lockdown, cannot go to the doctor. But she writes, she says, I have seen all my symptoms vanish. So although she's not been able to go to the doctor for obvious reasons now, all the symptoms have vanished. She says, I have more energy. I'm able to concentrate more than ever before. I'm not gloomy. I, you know, and she's just want to praise God for that, uh, that, that, that work of healing. Thank God for that. Now, here's another testament that came on the 4th of April. This person wrote, uh, they had uh, a mild disc problem, a slip disc problem uh, from March. And because of this, uh, 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 he was in, uh, having a lot of troubles uh, in his back. And, um, and uh, so actually this person has, has had multiple healings. So uh, one was the problem with the back um, and uh, they had prayed for the back pain. And um, uh, uh, she, she went to the, uh, uh, yesterday she said, I happened to go to an orthopedic for some minor problem. And the doctor told me, I have no symptoms of slip disc. Another problem she had, uh, diabetic condition since 2017. Uh, she prayed and again, she tested. Uh, this was in January 20, uh, reports came back. She was completely healed. Uh, there's no indication of that. Uh, uh, fibroids from 2017, uh, again, uh, tested. And uh, uh, she, uh, she writes there that, uh, although she didn't necessarily ask God for it, God has been gracious to heal me and deliver me uh, from these things. So multiple healings. Of course, this person has attached medical reports and all that. Uh, I cannot go into all the details it's, uh, too much, but thank God she, she had multiple healings in her body and that's what she writes and testifies. Here's one testimony that, that really was so special uh, to my heart. This comes from a 76-year-old man. Uh, this came on Wednesday, 8th of April. Uh, now, uh, he has actually been part of the Indian Army. He joined the Indian Army at the age of eight, uh, 19. He's fought in the 1971 Indo-Pak War and all of that. Uh, so he talks about that in, in his early childhood. His mom had you know, given him a New Testament and, and told him to follow Jesus. But you know, he had not really walked according to that and just walked away. But he said on Sunday, March 22nd, he, this is what he writes. He says, "One that sermon, one touch sermon changed my life 
on together. It opened the opaque window of my heart and I confessed all my sins to God. And thereafter, I felt the great sense of relief and experienced a feeling of joy. I now know that the Lord has accepted my confession because he's a just and faithful God. So a 76 year old man touched on March 22nd through that uh, service online. Uh, last testimony I want to share. Uh, this one came on Sunday, April 12th, just this past Sunday. Uh, the person was watching us on, on, online. Uh, this past Sunday, he had lower back pain uh, continuously for three days. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, he, he only could talk to a doctor online. And, you know, maybe they, they suspected kidney stones and he was so concerned about it. Uh, the doctor said, you have to come in, get an ultrasound for us to, you know, figure out what the problem is. Uh, and, you know, of course, he couldn't do that because of the lockdown. But anyway, during the communion time, as we were partaking of the Lord's table, uh, he and his wife prayed. He specifically asked God to heal him of this pain. He laid his hand on that part of his body. And uh, he says, as soon as the prayer got over, all the pain was gone. He was able to stretch down, move sideways, everything. He said there was no trace of that pain. Tears flowed down effortlessly. And, and, I thank, and this is, I truly want to praise God. Thank God for this miracle. It's so wonderful to listen to all of these testimonies. And remember, all of this is happening through our online services. Uh, you know, we are not actually meeting together, of course. I know meeting together is is is, is great. Uh, we all miss that. Uh, I personally miss you know those times after service when we get to interact with people, talk to people, pray for them personally, lay hands and minister. Uh, I, I do miss that. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, for this for this present season, this this is what is available. We, we, God is greater than all of these lockdowns and limitations, and God is at work. So I want you to expect the Lord to do something wonderful in your life, even as we spend time together in the Word of God, uh, build our faith up, encourage ourselves, and then as we pray towards the close of the service, uh, believe God for miracles, believe God to come through for you. Uh, whatever your situation, there is nothing impossible with our God. Uh, as Jeremiah said, our Lord God, you made the heavens and the earth by your great power and your outstretched arm, nothing is too difficult for you. Nothing is impossible with God. And so we want to believe God for that. Uh, over the last few weeks, we've been talking about the blood covenant. And uh, honestly, uh, you know, we have just been giving uh, some of the essence, the uh, the key highlights, the key points uh, of this whole teaching on blood covenants that we find in, in scripture. Uh, and, uh, you know, hopefully uh, in the not, not too distant future, we can release a, uh, release a complete book um, that talks about the covenants, the cross and the blood. These three go together. So uh, we are actually putting together this book on the covenants, the cross and the blood. Uh, they all go together. They all connected. And uh, 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 we need to understand each each aspect uh, to get a, a full understanding of the subject on the covenants, uh, the cross of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus. Uh, it, it is, it's a wonderful thing. And uh, I'm looking forward, I uh, look forward to uh, releasing that out uh, uh, as a free resource soon. Now, uh, we're just giving you highlights of, of, of these things. And uh, uh, we have covered uh, in the last few services on um, uh, what is the meaning, uh, what is a blood covenant, what is a covenant, uh, what is the purpose of a covenant and how God establishes a covenant. We did that in uh, the first part of this series. And um, we, you know, one of the important things we said was that the purpose of a covenant, uh, of the blood covenant especially, is for a, a loving, intimate relationship. That's why God establishes a covenant. And everything about that relationship is wrapped, uh, is a, uh, encapsulated, if you will, uh, by this blood covenant. It is undergirded, it is covered. Uh, uh, it is, it is uh, completely protected by the blood covenant. Everything that goes into that relationship. So when God says, you are my son, you are my daughter, that is a blood covenant relationship. That relationship is covered by his blood covenant. When he says, you are an heir and you're a joint heir with Jesus, that relationship is covered by this blood covenant. And so the purpose of the blood covenant is to bring us into this intimate, loving relationship with God, a relationship where you and I are so secure. And yet we know that God 
ha, expects us to respect that covenant and walk very honorably of that covenant. Uh, in part two, we talked about the new covenant that Jesus established with his own body and blood. There could be no greater blood covenant than this, that God would offer his own body and his own blood to establish this covenant, to put it in place and uh, set it there for us and then invite us in to come into that covenant. In part three, uh, last Sunday, uh, we talked about the fact that uh, today, uh, Jesus uh, exalted uh, in his uh, glorified stay, uh, he, of course, he is king, he is Lord, there are many things that we can talk about. But in relation to the covenant, we highlighted two important aspects, that Jesus is the, the high priest of the covenant, and Jesus is also the mediator, the guarantor, the surety, or the enforcer of this covenant which he has established. The Bible calls it the everlasting covenant. So really, you know, God planned this covenant even before eternity. And, uh, you know, we've talked about that in some earlier uh, messages where even before God created, he set certain things in place. Uh, the, Jesus was the Lamb of God slain from before the foundation of the world. That means even before Adam and Eve were created, the Lamb of God was there. Uh, the work was already done in the mind of God. So also this covenant that we are talking about, uh, Hebrews calls it uh, the everlasting covenant, the eternal covenant, because it was there in the mind of God even before things happened in the natural, in time and space as we know it. So we are part of this eternal covenant uh, that has been put in place by the blood of the Lamb of God, of Jesus Christ. Uh, now, in this closing a message in the series on the blood covenant, we want to focus in on how you and I as, as believers can receive uh, the provisions, uh, the blessings uh, that God wants us to receive uh, in this, uh, through his covenant. So that, that is one of the aspects of covenant that, that the lesser uh, is blessed by the greater. Uh, when uh, Abraham met uh, Melchizedek, he blessed him. He was a high priest. He blessed him. Uh, now, we are, are recipients of God's covenant, and God has made provision for us to receive it. So I want to talk about that. I want to try to put it together. i put this message together in a very concise way, uh, as, as clearly as possible, uh, so that you and I can be encouraged to receive covenant blessings. You know, it is so sad, and it's something that, uh, I, I think about a lot is why are God's people living so far below uh, the blessings, the provisions and the privileges that God has actually made available for us? Now, we are all good people. Uh, we are all sincere people. We really love the Lord. Uh, but somehow uh, our life doesn't, uh, uh, is not reflecting who our God is. Our God is Jehovah Rapha. Why are God's people falling sick and dying. Our God is Jehovah Nisi, the Lord who gives us victory. But why are God's people still defeated in one or more areas of their lives? Our God is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. Uh, but then why are God's people struggling? Uh, and so on. So uh, you know, that is a, a burden. That's something that we're trying to answer and, and trying to get a, uh, an understanding on why are we as God's people living far below uh, what the Bible says we can live at. And, you know, the wrong thing to do in this, in, in such a scenario uh, is to, uh, is to, is to change our theology to accommodate our experience. That's what we should not do. Don't change your theology. Your theology is always based on the word of God. Change your experience to match your theology. That means you say, God, this is what your word says. I want to lift the level of my experience to match your word. Don't try to change his word and filter it down and twist it around and change your theology to you know, explain away your uh, lack of expression and experience of who God really is. No, never do that. God is Jehovah Rapha. He's the healer always. So what we have to do is, God, how do I change my experience? How do I lift my experience? Where am I missing it? So that I lift my experience up to the level of the promise of your word, to the level of, of what Jesus said I can have. How do I lift this up to match that? There is always this gap that we are seeing. Uh, we have to accept it. And then we have to talk to God and say, God, show us how to bridge the gap. Show us how to rise up so that 
We can, don't have to change the goddess. We don't have to change what his word says, but lift our experience up to the level of his word. And that's what we are trying to do here in this message today. So much of the things I will talk to you about, we will hear from the word of God, will challenge us to say, God, work in me. Lift the level of my experience up to match your word. Right? Don't try to say, don't try to, you know, uh, explain away his word and your lack of experiencing his word. Don't do that. Lift your experience up to the level of his word. So as we talk about receiving new covenant blessings, covenant blessings, you know, first of all, we need to understand what does our covenant, what are our covenant privileges, provisions, and blessings? You know, and we, we do this all the time. You know, suppose you sign up for a, a tour package or you sign up for, you know, uh, uh, some, some, some uh, engagement. Uh, you know, you want to know what, what is included in that package. Of course, you've paid some money, but, you know, does that tour package include hotel stays? All your flights are covered. Uh, all your meals are covered. All the local transportation is covered. You want to know that. It'll be so sad after you sign up for the package and you pay for it all. Uh, and because, just because of you don't know that, you know, your meals are covered, you go and start buying your own meals. It's a waste of your time and a waste of your money. Or you sit down in the room saying, hmm, I have nothing to eat. Uh, that is foolish because your tour package includes all of that. So you can go go to the buffet, enjoy your meal, um, enjoy your local transportation, whatever. You need to know what your package includes. And so also, if it be, you know, that's just a small example. But the point is this, that we must know what our covenant that with God, the covenant that God has given to us, what is what are the provisions He has made as part of that covenant? What are the privileges that He has given to us and say, take it, this is part of my covenant with you? What are the blessings that He uh, uh, gives to us? Remember, it's all by grace, meaning this covenant that we're talking about is a covenant of grace. It is not something God is giving to us because you know you deserve it, you've earned it. No. It's a covenant of grace. So God is saying, I'm giving this to you uh, because of my loving kindness towards you. But we need to know that. That's very important. Now, uh, as we said in the very beginning, in part one of this uh, message, the, there are two cornerstones of God's covenant. One, it is his nature. And second is his word. These are cornerstones of God's covenant. So if we want to understand uh, our privileges, our provision, the provisions and the blessings that God extends to us, we just have to look at the very nature of God and his word. What did he say in his word uh, that he's making available to us? And so I just want to quickly go through that aspect. So help us understand what really has been made available to us. And then in the latter part of this message, talk about how do we appropriate, how do we receive uh, these covenant blessings? So, let me talk about the nature of God. Uh, you know, God made a simple statement to Abraham. He said, you know, Abraham, and he made this Abrahamic covenant. He said, I will bless you. Now, you know, in, in, in that statement, God never said, I will heal you. I will provide for you. I will protect you. He did not give those minor details. He simply said, I will bless you. Or he said, I am El Shaddai. I am the Lord God Almighty, who was more than enough, who was more than sufficient. That's all. So I'm El Shaddai, you walk before me, uh, be perfect. So uh, when God said, I will bless you, he didn't actually have to spell out all the details. It's simply saying, all that I am, I'm making available to you through my covenant. On the other end of the covenant, the one, the covenant maker is El Shaddai. He's more than enough. He is God and all who he is, he's making available to the covenant. And here, here's, here's this, this uh, wonderful example, illustration of this that we see in scripture. You see, God never told Abraham specifically, I am your healer. But in Luke the, 10, Luke the 13th chapter, uh, when Jesus is ministering to this woman in the synagogue, uh, she's had this back problem for 18 years. You know what Jesus tells? He says, um, this woman who's been a daughter, who's, who is a daughter of Abraham, she deserves to be healed. She has to be healed. Satan is bound there, but she's a daughter of Abraham. Now, did God tell Abraham, I will heal you? No, he just said, I will bless you. 
But in saying, I will bless you, he meant everything I am, I'm giving to you. And here Jesus is saying, she's a daughter of Abraham. She has a right. She has a provision for her healing. She has a privilege or a blessing, whatever word you want to use. Healing is hers because the God who told Abraham, I will bless you and said, I will keep that for you. I will keep that covenant with all your children. This woman is a daughter of Abraham. Healing is hers. So you see, all the God has spelt it out. To Abraham, when he said, I will bless you, it meant all that he is, is being made available to, uh, uh, to, to his people. So that's why these covenant names of God are important. We mentioned this um, in our very first message when God said, I am Yahweh. Yahweh is the eternal, self-existent, immutable, unchangeable God who keeps covenant. That's Yahweh, the God of covenant, the eternal God who keeps covenant, Yahweh. And he revealed himself through his covenant name. So all of these covenant names are an expression of an aspect of the nature of God. He is Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rohi, uh, so many of these covenant names. And I think there are about 52 of these covenant names. Uh, and, and all of this is really being made available to us through the covenant. So can you imagine when God says, you come into my covenant through my son, Jesus Christ. You are entering into a covenant with Almighty God and all who God is has been made available to you through that blood covenant. That's the nature of God. The nature of God is a cornerstone of this covenant. And you and I must believe Jehovah Rapha is for me. Jehovah Jireh is mine. He is for me through this covenant. All who he is, is made available through this covenant. The second aspect of us understanding uh, what provision God has made, what privileges and blessings he's made available to us uh, through the blood covenant is to know the word of God. And if you study the word of God, uh, and I'm going to, of course, talk about the Abrahamic covenant, the Mosaic covenant, and then the new covenant, and just look at scripture on these things. Now, in uh, what does the scripture say of, uh, about the new covenant in relation to the Abrahamic covenant? Now, this is what the word of God says. Remember, this is the second cornerstone of God's covenant, the word of God. And so we're going to look at what does the word of God tell me uh, about the provisions, the privileges, and the blessings that God has made available to you and me in His in the blood covenant. Abrahamic covenant, what did God say in Galatians 3, 13 and 14 and verse 29? The scripture says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And verse 29, And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So what is the scripture saying here? It's saying here that if you and I belong to Jesus, the blessing of Abraham passes on to us. Now, of course, uh, we are Gentiles. We are not natural descendants of Abraham. But he says, because we belong to Jesus, we inherit, we receive the blessings that God had given to Abraham. Now, if you look at scripture uh, and you say, now, what did Abraham receive as a blessing because of his uh, covenant with God? What did God do in his life? Of course, immediately people would say, well, the, first, the blessing he received was the blessed gift of righteousness. God imputed righteousness to him. And that is true. But that was not the only thing God did. You look at the whole package, look at everything else that God bestowed on Abraham because Abraham was in covenant with him. And that's what we should understand. That's what we should take because the Bible says we are Abraham's descendants and we inherit the promise. Just like Isaac inherited, we inherit, but we do it through Christ spiritually. So uh, if, you, if you study the scripture, and I'm just summarizing this for us, we see that God blessed Abraham in all things. You know, in Genesis 24, Abraham's servant says, you know, my, the Lord has blessed my master greatly and he has blessed him in everything. Every area of his life was blessed. Secondly, we see that God blessed Abraham so that he could become a blessing. He would be a channel of blessing to others. We see that 
Uh, as we mentioned, righteousness was given to Abraham because of faith. Abraham had friendship with God, which we said is the purpose of covenant relationship. It's that loving intimacy with God. And Abraham entered into that. God called him a friend in James 2.23. Abraham had victory over his enemies. Uh, so when he had to uh, battle, he experienced victory. God was with him, gave him victory. Uh, Abraham had blessings on him and his family, his descendants. God said, I will bless your descendants after you in their generation. So this was part of Abraham's, God's covenant to Abraham. And the Bible is saying, you know, if you are Christ, you inherit these things. So we need to open our minds and say, okay, this is what God has made available. If God did this for Abraham, Abraham was a man of faith. I am walking by faith. I inherit these things according to the word of God. We are not violating the word. We're just embracing what God has put in his word. Now, when you look at the Mosaic Covenant, and, and again, we said that God had established a blood covenant with his people through, the, through Moses, uh, which, you know, uh, uh, that, that was a blood covenant that God had put in place. Now, even you look at the Mosaic Covenant, God, of course, gave them a lot of commandments and instructions, but even that covenant came with blessings. Deuteronomy 28 uh, verses uh, 1 through 14, talk about all of these blessings. And uh, it's an extended passage that you could read. And basically God is saying, you'll be blessed coming in. You'll be blessed going out. The blessings of God will overtake you. The Lord will bless you in all the work of your hands. You'll be blessed in the city. You'll be blessed in the field. Your basket, your store will be blessed. The heavens above you will be blessed to give you rain in your land in its season. And God says, you will, you'll be so blessed. You will lend it to many others. Uh, you, will, you will not have to borrow. Uh, he will make you the head. He'll put you above only. And all of these blessings will come upon you. This was the Mosaic Covenant. And in light of the Mosaic Covenant, what is the New Covenant state? Now, we must understand the Bible is saying very clearly, for example, in Hebrews 7 and verse 22, it says, By so much more, Jesus has become a surety of a better covenant. So Jesus is a surety. We talked about this last Sunday. He's a surety. He's a mediator. He's a guarantor of what? of a better covenant. So the new covenant that Jesus brings to us, the eternal everlasting covenant through his own blood and his own body offered for us, Jesus is the surety of a better covenant. This covenant is better. So that means if all these blessings were promised under the old covenant, which has been done away with, then I must look at the old covenant and say, hey, that's got to be my minimum because I, you and I are in a better covenant. Same thing in Hebrews 8 and verse 6. The scripture says, But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry, inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. So this covenant that Jesus gives to us, the Bible is saying, it's a better covenant. It has better promises. So, uh, you know, it is only right for us. Look at the Mosaic Covenant, the Old Covenant. Look at all the things God promised them, uh, victory over their enemies. He said, you know, the enemy will come before you one way. They'll flee before you seven ways. Um, victory in their lives and uh, health and blessing and, and all of that. And, 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 and you, you'll be my own peculiar people and you will have my word and you'll, you'll love the Lord your God. you have a wonderful relationship with God. All of that was given in the Old Covenant. Now we are in a better covenant. So God... I've got to have better than that. And, you know, I, I'm not saying that, uh, you know, you, you and I take those promises and therefore we all say, you know, we're going to have, all have mansions and we're all going to have many cars and do all of that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying for each one of us in our lives, these promises are relevant. You know, if you are a, uh, uh, if you're a farmer somewhere, for you, that covenant comes into force to bless you in what you do in your farming, in whatever you're doing. If you're a businessman, you're running a small business somewhere, for you that covenant comes into force to bless you right there in your home, your family, uh, your, your business, so that you can be a blessing. Now, some of you may be people in big places of influence. You may be CEOs, and you may be presidents and vice presidents of large corporations. Well, this covenant comes into force right there. So in that place, God will bless you. God will cause you to do well. And God will cause your family to be blessed. And through that, uh, you can reveal it. So this covenant is re relevant to each of us, uh, right where we are, whatever vocation, whatever place, whatever stage, whatever standing we have in life, the covenant comes into effect. 
And, and all these blessings are things that all of us can take a hold of and say, God, this is part of the covenant. I want to receive it. You know, when you come into the new covenant, the Bible is explicitly telling us uh, uh, that in the new covenant, you and I are blessed. We, uh, Ephesians 1 and verse 3, it says, Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. So every spiritual blessing. And now when we think, say, use the word spiritual blessing, don't think about just things that are not, not relevant to the natural world. Now, every spiritual blessing means every blessing that comes from God who is spirit. God is spirit. So every blessing that comes from God is spiritual. And he is the healer. He's a provider. He's a deliverer. He's a miracle worker. He's a door opener. He's a mountain mover. Yeah, he's the you know, wilderness changer. Every blessing that comes from God who is spirit is a spiritual blessing. So everything that flows from God is available to you in Christ. God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. It's what the scripture is saying. Again, I want us to understand that everything that comes from God, that is spoken of by his nature, that is spoken to us in his word, is available to you and me as believers. One more important thing I want to highlight before we go and talk about how to receive this. I want us to understand that as, as New Covenant believers, each one of us has access to all of these blessings. The Bible tells us here in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He says, give thanks to God because he has qualified us. He has made us fit. He has made us competent to partake, to share in the inheritance uh, that he offers to his saints, his people who, who are in the light. That means whoever you are as a saint, as a believer of God in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have been already qualified. It means, you know, uh, there is no pre-qualification necessary. You've gone past that. You are qualified. Uh, to, it is waiting for you to come and take it. In other words, you know, uh, you, you've already gone through the pre-qualification process. And God is saying you are qualified to partake, to receive the inheritance that has been made available to each one of his people who belong to his kingdom. So you as a believer, you have every quote unquote right. Uh, you are ready to partake of the blessings. So now how do we receive our covenant blessings? Having understood that our covenant blessings entails everything God is offering to his people, how do we receive? I want us to look at three important keys or just simple things. Uh, I want to make this as simple as possible. Number three important things are receiving covenant blessings. Number one is obedience to his word. Number two, we need to exercise faith. And number three, we need to take it by force. And I'm going to cover these things as quickly as I can. Number one is we must be obedient to God's word. And we see all of these three things portrayed or embodied in, 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 in Abraham, as a man who walked in blood covenant with God. And the reason I point to Abraham is because the Bible talks to us in the new covenant. It says, follow the faith of that man, Abraham, so we can connect our Abraham and to our walk of faith. So Abraham did all of these three things. He walked in obedience to God. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. Uh, and then again, in verse 11, it says, you know, when Abraham was called, he obeyed God. He went out. He followed God. Um, and when he was asked by God to offer Isaac, uh, he offered, he obeyed God. So Abraham obeyed God. Secondly, Abraham walked by faith. That's why Romans chapter 4 tells us, you know, that we have to walk in the steps of the faith of Abraham. Uh, in Romans chapter 4 and uh, verse 12, had a walk in the steps of the faith. And Romans 4, 17, 21 tells us about the faith of Abraham. And Abraham also took it by force. Hebrews 6 and verse 12 says, you know, you got we got to be like Abraham, who through faith and patience inherited the promise. So, you know, he, he didn't take it lightly, even though he had to wait 25 years to see the promise fulfilled. Uh, now, I'm not saying it will take 25 years in your life and mine. We're just looking at Abraham's example. Uh, but he held on to the promise of God and he was able to see it fulfilled. So, number one, obedience to God's word. We must uh, know the word of God and we must live by the word of God. If you want to receive the covenant provisions, blessings and privileges over your life, walk 
in the light of God's word. Acts 20 and verse 32, uh, the apostle Paul tells the leaders at Ephesians, he says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified by faith. You see, why is the word of God important? The word of God's grace so important because it is that word that builds us up, that matures us so that we can walk in our inheritance. You see, uh, many people like to be inspired with, by the word, but look, uh, thank God for uh, messages that inspire us, but we need messages that build us up. We need messages that disciple us, that mature us, that cause us to grow and stretch and build. Because when we grow, to that we are built up by the word, then we can walk in our inheritance. And that's what we are trying to do as we bring the word of God to you. So know the word. The apostle Paul prayed for the Ephesian believers in Ephesians 1 and verse 18. He says, I want the eyes of your understanding to be enlightened so that you will know the riches of the inheritance that belongs to you. We must know the word. We must walk in the word, obey the word, align yourself to the word of God. This is where the Holy Spirit works. He causes us to obey the word of God. He gives us the strength, uh, the, uh, the, the, the equipping, the empowering we need to obey God's word. Number two, we must exercise faith. You know, every promise of God is received by faith. Abraham walked by faith into the promise of God. When Jesus ministered to people in the old covenant, he responded to people who came to him in faith. They saw him, they reached out to him, and he responded to their faith. They received by faith. Even people outside the covenant, like the Roman centurion or the woman from Canaan, came and received by faith. So you and I must learn the dynamic of how to exercise faith in God. You see, the wrong... Uh, position many of us take as, oh, I believe in Jesus, so I have faith. I know how to use faith. No, that's not true. Of course you believed in Jesus. Of course you have a measure of faith. But now you've got to learn how to walk by faith. You've got to learn how to exercise that faith in God. So the scriptures teach us. In fact, the Lord Jesus taught us about the dynamics of faith and how to exercise faith in God. And a very important passage that, that really captures for us very nicely, uh, you know, how to have faith in God, of course, is Mark chapter 11, uh, verses 22, 23, and 24, where Jesus gave a very succinct teaching on faith. In Mark 11, 22, he says, have faith in God. And then he says in verse 23, uh, verily I say to you, whosoever therefore shall say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, he will have whatever he says. And then verse 24, he says, uh, you know, whatever you desire when you pray, believe that you have received them and you will have them. So Jesus taught us about faith. You know, what must we do? Have faith in God, then speak. Speak your words of faith. Speak to your circumstance. Speak to your situation. Speak to your mountain. And third, believe that you have received. When you pray, believe that you have received. Now, if you and I, will exercise, will we'll take the word of God and, and exercise faith in the word in relation to our situations, we will begin to possess, we will begin to receive the provisions and the blessings of our blood covenant. So how does that work? So for instance, you know, take the covenant of healing. God said, you know, I am the Lord your healer. Now let's say you and I, maybe if you are fighting some disease in our body, we got to exercise faith to receive that blessing. Uh, you, you have to have faith in God, that God is your healer. Healing has been provided for you through the uh, cross of Jesus. It's part of God's covenant to you. You're a son and daughter of God. Healing is yours. Now exercise faith in that. You begin to speak those words of faith towards that sickness. What is that mountain? In this case, it's sickness. You begin to speak to it. You tell the mountain, sickness, disease, you have no place in my body because by the stripes of Jesus, I have been healed. You're exercising your faith in God and His provision, His word against that mountain. So you've got to speak there and then believe that you have received. So that means we believe that we have received. Even Jesus didn't say believe that you might receive. He didn't say believe that you'll receive it if it is the will of God. Uh, he didn't say believe that you will receive it when the time is right. He didn't say that. He said when you pray, 
believe that you have received. Again, this is where many of us miss it. We are well-meaning believers, sincere people, but we don't practice Mark 11, 24. We always come out of prayer saying, well, we will get it if God wants us to have it. That's wrong to say that. Uh, or sometimes we say, well, it will come in God's time. It's wrong to say that. Why? Because Jesus said, when you pray, believe that you have received it. When you know it's part of your provision and God has already said it's there in the covenant, then it's wrong for you and me to say, well, we will get it if God wants us to have it. It's wrong to make that statement because God already said it's part of the covenant. He wants us to believe that we have received it. So we say, God, I thank you. It's part of my covenant. I am declaring my body healed. It's done now. It's done in the spirit. I'm calling it done. It's not a matter of I may get it, I might get it. Uh, it will happen if it's God's will. Those are non-issues. They are not even in the picture. They, are, they don't belong to the covenant. They're not covenant talk. Covenant talk is I believe I've received because my God has covenanted it to me. It's mine. We practice Mark 11, 24. And now, of course, you know, you, you walk with wisdom. You do what you have to do. But that's your faith. Your faith is at work in you. And your faith will produce. According to your faith, it will be done. Faith is so important for us to receive our covenant provisions, blessings, and privileges. But we must understand how to exercise faith in God. Don't assume that you know how to exercise faith in God. Go to the scriptures. Learn from the scriptures. How am I supposed to exercise faith in God? Go to people who know how to walk by faith and they will teach you how to walk by faith. And then you begin to practice it in your life. And so that's how I must walk by faith. And so that is very important. And the third thing is this, you must take it by force. You know, Matthew chapter 11, verse 12, Jesus said, from the days of John the Baptist, until now, that means it's continuing even now. The kingdom of God is having is experiencing violence, and the violent take it by force. So from the time of John the Baptist, dynamics had changed. God's kingdom became available through the covenant. Here, everything that's in God's kingdom is yours now. Come in, take it. But Jesus said, the violent take it by force. Those who are spiritually aggressive, those who are spiritually tenacious. They are the ones who take what is in the kingdom. Now, why is that? It is not because God is keeping us out of the kingdom. It's not because of that. It is because there is the flesh and the devil that are trying to keep us out of the kingdom. And it's the people who are able to contend and push past what the flesh, our own flesh is doing and what the devil is doing. They are the ones who are going to experience the kingdom. So, you know, if you and I want to experience the kingdom, this applies. We've got to take it by force. And as we mentioned in our sermon last Sunday. There is Satan who is trying to keep us out from experiencing covenant provisions, privileges, and blessings. Even in the case of that woman in Luke the 13th chap chapter, uh, Jesus pointed out in verse 16, uh, this woman being a daughter of Abraham whom Satan has bound. You know, she's a covenant woman. She's a daughter of Abraham, but Satan's violated that covenant. And so we've got to destroy that. We've got to uh, do away with what Satan has done and release her so that she can enjoy her covenant provision, privileges, and blessings. So, you know, there is Satan who tries to do that. And there are several ways in which Satan tries to keep us uh, from enjoying a uh, new covenant provisions and blessings. And I'll just mention a few. You know, sometimes he tries to keep us in ignorance. He doesn't want us to know what's part of what God has promised for us and what God has given to us. Or sometimes he may cause us to forsake uh, our covenant, um, like it mentions in Deuteronomy 4 and 23. Uh, he, you know, he just says, okay, just, you know, he would divert us, distract us, uh, go cause us to go away from the covenant. Or sometimes he might seduce us. Daniel 11, 32 talks about that. Uh, he seduces us. Um, and takes us away, uh, deceives us, and takes us away from pursuing, walking in the covenant of God. Um, and the Bible also talks about those who dishonor, and that is it is very sad. People who willingly dishonor the blood of the covenant, uh, and they, they, they treat it as a common thing, and when they dishonor the covenant, obviously, uh, they're trapped by the enemy. They're no longer going to enjoy the blessings of the covenant. But this is the enemy's tactic. Uh, different ways in which he tries to keep people out of enjoying the blessings of the covenant. So we have to contend against Satan, against our own flesh, uh, and sometimes our own thinking, our own logic that keeps us from experiencing the covenant of God. So we have to press in, take it by 
for us. Three simple things. Be established in the word of God. Walk in the light of God's word. Number two, exercise your faith. Be strong in your faith in what you believe. Uh, you know, uh, and, and say, God, this is what you promised for me, my family, my children, my home. This is the blessing of God. I want it. I will have it and take it by force. Don't let the flesh or the devil keep you from enjoying your covenant blessings, the provisions and privileges that Almighty God has made available for you and me here on this earth to walk in. Of course, there are so many things. God's righteousness is ours. And we are in right standing with God as a covenant blessing. Many things that are ours as part of this covenant. You know, uh, we need to close right now. I know we've gone an uh, extended period of time here in this service. And I'm, I want to take some time to pray and just minister to you uh, uh, through prayer. And if you will join your faith with me, uh, pray and believe God with me. Uh, God will come through in your situation, in your life. Now, some of you watching, uh, uh, you may need healing in your body. Uh, as I pray right now, uh, uh, just as a sign of faith, as an act of faith, like the testimonies we heard today, uh, I want you to lay your hand on that part of your body that you want Jesus to heal. Or if I if I just put my hands like this and you want to touch your screen and just touch my hand, it's, it's as though, you know, when you, when you would come in a prayer line, I would have the opportunity to lay my hands on you. Uh, there's nothing magic about this but it's just a point of contact and saying yes I am connecting with this uh, servant of God is praying and I'm just connecting uh, and I'm going to receive it so it just you know if, if you came in a prayer line and you stood before me I would lay hands on you to pray now I can't do that but what I can do is as I put my hands out you can touch the screen wherever you're watching your phone or your computer and just say God I receive so if you want to do that you're welcome to do it if you want to lay your own ha hand on your own body you can do that if you're with other people you can get other believers to lay hands on you you can do that various ways in which God would as a you know you could minister healing. Uh, if you have uh, your son or daughter or your little children there, uh, you can have them lay hands on you or you can lay hands on them. Just do it. We're all believers. God will work through us. So we're going to pray for healing. But I also want to pray for people who are going through difficult situations and circumstances. You know, uh, 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 for some of us, of course, uh, uh, visas are a problem. Uh, people are stuck in various places. You know, you're not uh, prevented from being traveling. But I want to pray with you. Believe God that supernaturally God will intervene. Of course, we know government policies are there and uh, all those things are there. But let God intervene. And I don't know how he'll intervene, but let God intervene in those situations to come to your aid, to come to your assistance in the situation that you're facing. For those of you who are, who are Having businesses and your business have businesses has been disrupted uh, in some way. I want to join. I want you to join with me and believe God that He will bring a restoration of things. Now, there are, of course, a lot of things that happen that are out of out of your control. But God is bigger than those situations. God can uh, cause supernatural increase. He can bring about supernatural multiplication. Take for example in Luke five. You know, Peter and the disciples. They spent whole night fishing. They caught nothing. Now that was, you know, maybe a good eight hours of work. Nothing happened. But they came out, uh, came back. They encountered Jesus. Uh, Jesus used Peter's boat to preach a sermon. Then he handed the boat back to Peter and he said, Peter, just launch out into the deep. Throw your net. And in that moment, what he did not experience in eight hours, in that maybe eight minutes, he experienced uh, a net breaking, boat sinking load of fish. He caught it. And you know, God turned everything around that day for Peter. And I believe God can do the same thing. Jesus can do the same thing for you and me in our situations. And he can step in and believe God uh, uh, and work miracles. And we just must believe God. So we're gonna take some time to pray, to do that. I want you to join your heart with me when we pray. I believe God for healings, for miracles, for deliverances. And if there's anyone watching and you've never given your life to Jesus, that's the greatest miracle that will take place inside you. You can be born again. You can have your sins forgiven. You, Jesus can become the Lord and Savior of your life. So while we are praying, you cry out in your own heart and say, Jesus, come into my life. Forgive my sins. Make me a child of God. And that miracle of salvation will take place inside you. And that is the one most wonderful miracle any one of us can experience and we want you to have it. Let's pray together. I'm going to just pray in a very simple way, but we have a great big God who is there to meet you 
all right where you are let's join our hearts together as we pray father uh, we just join our hearts together as we pray people are watching listening from various places at various times father right now in the name of jesus let your healing power flow work miracles that miracles take place right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let bones be healed. Let nerves be healed. Let chemical imbalances come back to normal. Let organs be healed in the name of Jesus. Let uh, chemical levels in the blood come to normal in the name of Jesus. And I take authority over every demonic work in the name of Jesus. I destroy it by the authority of Jesus' name and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Every spirit of infirmity, listen to me. I command you come out. Every spirit of insanity, every spirit of depression and oppression, confusion in the mind, every spirit that has captured the mind, I command you come out in the name of Jesus. Release the minds of people that people be set free. And Father, we pray especially for people in difficult situations, those who are held up in uh, certain places uh, because of uh, 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 the visa issue. Lord, I pray for divine intervention, a supernatural intervention in their situation. Let them know that God from heaven has intervened in their situation. We pray for businesses that have been disrupted. God, that you will supernaturally turn things around for their businesses so they will know that you are God who hears and answers prayer, that you will open the windows of heaven, pour out such blessing that they won't have room enough to receive it. So do these things and let there be testimonies that glorify your name and your name alone and we ask this in the matchless, mighty name of Jesus. And thank you, Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today on the service. You know, if God has done something for you right now, feel free to type it on the live chat and just let people know. Uh, we don't know how many are watching at the moment, but whether wherever they are, uh, let them know that something has happened to you. What we'd also like is if you can send us an email to testimony at apcwo.org. So emails that come to us with a testimony, those we are able to share with others. And we will, all, we will do it anonymously. We will not uh, reveal your personal details or other things like that. But just the, the fact that God has touched you or intervened in your situation, turn something around that as, you, as we pray. So share your testimony. With us and remember to share this video this message this service with as many people as you can send them the link tell them to go to uh, youtube.com slash all people search bangalore and let them benefit let them be inspired let them be touched through this uh, service that has taken place so share it out with as many people as you can uh, and let them also be blessed next sunday is supernatural sunday it's a time and we're going to pray for healings and miracles uh, it will be a simple message that we will uh, share and then we'll pray specifically for people. So I want you to get people uh, uh, to tune in, uh, to listen to the service. Uh, I tell them it's a service that is meant to be prayed for healings, miracles and deliverances. That will happen next Sunday, the 26th of April. And after that, we're going to start a wonderful series on the mighty name of Jesus. And I'm really excited about that. Uh, uh, the subsequent Sunday, uh, uh, that's the first Sunday of uh, May, we're going to do a six-part, I think, uh, message on the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, and so we want to, I want you to just tell as many people as you can to tune into those services. We're going to uncover the richness, the magnificence, the power, and the greatness of the name of Jesus and just draw from all of that uh, into our own lives. So tune in for those services through the month of May as we talk about the mighty name of Jesus. We're going to close with a benediction and we are so thankful to you for joining us today. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us, continue with each of us always. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. See you again.